To get started with this course, we will need to define what is data science. And I'm asking you, why are you here? What are you looking to learn? Or what's going to be that final objective you have once you go through all our lessons and practices and challenges, etc. And to be honest, personally, I don't like the term data science because it's extremely broad. Data science means multiple things depending where it's used. If it's each company is going to have a different uh, understanding of what data science is or whenever they are requesting a data scientist, right? They are posting a, a job for a data scientist. They're going to have different understandings of them. Institutions, government, everybody has a different understanding of data science. It's sometimes easier to define what a, what, what a data analyst is what a data engineer is, etc. Uh, but to be honest, data science is still too broad. It makes sense. This is a very new, young discipline. It's just being defined as we are working with it. So in the next couple of years, we will have a better definition. Nevertheless, we can still pinpoint a couple of common things that are going to be present in the data science discipline uh, pretty much all the time. First of all, it's a uh, data science. It is a very good picture, which pretty much defines what data science is going to be. And it's the combination of programming skills. You need to know, to know how to code. This is very important. In our bootcamp, we work with uh, many companies and they always have problems when they have candidates that are good at analyzing, for example, data, but they just can't code. So it's very important for you to learn how to code, to be a very good programmer if you want to be a data scientist. The second bubble here, if you want, is the math and statistics knowledge. This is, of course, important to be a data scientist because all the data you will be analyzing, it's going to make a lot more sense once you can run it through regular statistical uh, experiments and tests. To be honest, you if I would have to scale these bubbles, I would uh, shrink a little bit the math and the statistics one, because in our experience, it's not so important to learn all the advertised subdisciplines of math. It's of course very important, but for example, we have students that come to us saying, do I need to know calculus? If you're just getting started with data science, the answer is no, you don't. You might need to understand what a der derivative is later if you're coding your own machine learning um, algorithms. But right now, you don't. You can just get started understanding the basics of statistics. So it is important, of course, to have a mathematical reason to understand statistics and probability, but it's not so key to get all the other aspects, right? Like, um, I don't know, again, calculus or other advanced features of math if you're just getting started. With time, as you're making progress in your course, in your learning, you will, of course, be getting these concepts, mathematical concepts, and you can, at the end, have a pretty good understanding, but it's not necessary for you to stop now and spend six months trying to learn math without getting started with data science by itself. So again, statistics is the most important part. Second, we could say linear algebra, understanding what a matrix is, what a vector is, what um, just regular operations with a linear algebra are. This is probably uh, a little bit more important too. And finally, we have substantial, uh, substantial sorry, expertise. You need to have substantial expertise about the field that you're working. You need to know about the discipline, all right? So you need to have an understanding of what are you going to be working with and what is the domain. It's very hard to do data science if you don't know the domain. So let me give you a very good example, um, something that actually happened to me a long time ago. If I have to clean a data set, right, I get a, a CSV, for example, with users, with customers, and I have, I don't know, the age column. There's a column that has the age of each one of our customers. I can very well do cleaning based on a sane range of ages, right? If I have a, if I have a user, I'd say that if these are, for example, website users, 
the the age should start at I don't know 14 15 maybe and what could be the maximum age 100 120 so it is very simple there then to do the basic cleaning what if I have an age that is 200 for example that is obviously an invalid value there was something wrong there either an extra zero when someone was typing or just a mistake when I'm pulling data there is a mistake if the age column has a value 200 because we know that there are no human beings that are 200 years old so that is simple because I know the domain I know humans basically but um, if I am working on a biology lab, for example, I am very good at these other two skills. I am very good at programming and I am very good at math and statistics. And I go to work on a biology lab and they give me the results of a test. And they tell me that this person has, I'm going to make a couple of numbers up, has 20 thousand white cells per milliliter of blood is that too much are those too few is it the correct value i don't know there is no way i could clean that value if i don't know about the domain that i'm currently working on it's very difficult if you don't know the domain to clean the data to extract insights to find patterns to see anomalies etc if again if you don't know the domain so combining all these skills we're gonna arrive finally to data science moving forward um, we also have to very quickly talk about the data scientist uh, procedure right what are the steps that we follow as data scientists and again it's hard to define what a data scientist is but we can be sure that at least all these steps will be taken whenever you're embarking in these data science job i am linking here this article right here it's a very good article it has uh, a good um, description of each one of these phases right that are uh, defined as a data scientist and basically something that again is common for every data scientist data analyst data engineering is this part of getting the data first somehow you need to get the data uh, analyzing it sorry cleaning it analyzing it rearranging it data wrangling usually call and then taking action on it maybe building reports making decisions building machine learning models etc so getting the data can range from something as simple as a sql query if you are working on some data project in your own company so you're collecting your data i don't know let's think about spotify they want to do a quick analysis on their on the usage of their app they have the data they are generating the data they are logging the users um, behavior and they have their own data so how are you going to get the data just a sql query period you're done you can move forward do you need to clean it probably you don't you are in charge of generating the data so there will not be mistakes as long as your app is working fine there you can't expect it to be in a very reasonable form that is one example in the other end right we had sorry in the first end in the first in the beginning or, or sorry in this first scenario that i told you you're getting data from your own database so it's very simple to get and probably it's pretty clean on the other end of the spectrum you have that f process of acquiring the data from multiple external sources so you're not getting the data from your own company or, or just institution. You have to get it from somewhere else. Sometimes there is a provider that is giving you the data. So for example, you, your marketing team and your sales team, they use Salesforce. So you wanna pull data from Salesforce to do some quick analysis. In that case, Salesforce is the one keeping track of the data. In order to get it, you need to use an API probably or you need to export it in some way it will still be pretty clean we are again getting to the other end of the spectrum until we reach something like for example scraping data this is probably the worst case in this in this preparation side you have to scrape data you have to do OCR basically reading text that it's already 
printed, right? So this is the other spectrum. Scraping is a very good example. You have to scrape websites, which always fails. It's very complicated. The data is always uh, dirty, right? It's like there is, it's pretty much impossible to get all the reads perfectly. So you will have to do cleaning. You will have to do um, analysis once you are almost done with the cleaning to reiterate on the process, etc. So again, on the other end of the spectrum of acquiring and cleaning data, it's the worst case probably, which is scraping data and cleaning after that. So again, once you have figured out the, the data gathering process, you go into the analysis one. And to do analysis, it, it is important to separate in multiple steps. Usually it's the regular analysis you're gonna see during this course, understanding numeric variables, um, uh, statistical definitions of these variables, uh, inspecting categorical variables, uh, pretty much the standard. And this is a very iterative process. Um, you will be doing this analysis, going back into the data cleaning phase, going back into analysis, etc., etc., etc. Usually these analysis also involve some rearrangement of the data, data wrangling, right? So for example, transforming categorical data variables into dummy variables. This is gonna be something we're gonna see in our course. You will have to somehow manipulate your data, change it a little bit, from the structure you got it originally and set it in a proper way for you to conduct your analysis. And finally, once you are done, what you will need to do is take action on that data, right? Sometimes the action is as simple as building a report. That's it. You create a report with the data, you drive a few conclusions and you're done. That's your job. That's of course the easiest I could say. On the other end, you can also keep thinking something like make a decision. The management team comes to you and says, should we are gonna conduct this experiment and we need you to tell us if we should keep pushing for it in two months from now. So you have to analyze the performance of it. Should we keep pouring money into this experiment? Is it worth it? Yes or no? Or this ad, is it good or not? We're gonna take some action to minimize, to minimize, sorry, uh, customer churn. Is it gonna work? Are we gonna increase retention? So you will have to make a decision. This is of course a little bit more um, complicated. At, at least it requires a little bit more responsibility. And then the final action is when you are building a machine learning model that it's going to be promoted to production, right? So recommending things for your web, for your users, um, recommending uh, or analyzing anomalies or detecting fraud, etc. Creating production ready machine learning models. This is of course a little bit more complicated and it's down the road in the, the, the final right stages of data science. So again, I encourage you to take a look at uh, these posts that it has pretty much uh, all we've discussed. There is um, a pretty good definition here. What I wanna say with uh, what is data science is again, it's still very early in the data science lifetime. So we are still defining, you are defining it here with me as we're doing this work in 10 years, 20 years, it's gonna be a little bit more fixed, right? It's gonna be a little, a little bit more clear what, what data science is. That's gonna be because of our work in this case. Um, remember, as I told you at the beginning, it's usually a little bit easier to define what data analysis is, what um, data engineering is, uh, what, um, these like secondary, if you want, roles are, they're not secondary, but usually they're less abstract than data science, so it's easier to define it. Similar to data science being too broad, you also have, have something like big data, right? What does it mean? But that's probably uh, the subject of another video. So keep pushing with this co course. This was a very theoretical lesson. In the following ones, we will be writing a ton of code and doing a lot of practice.